Hey guys, what's up? This is Eggs. You guys aren't gonna believe this, eh? I've just um I've just finished the recording for the commentary for this video or whatever. The mic's muted the whole fucking time. What a G up. So I've gotta do this all again, mate. What an effort, eh? But uh now welcome to guys to this uh this game. I got this game probably two hours ago now. And uh this is as soon as I finished this game, I was like, what the fuck just happened? So I've had to record it. And upload it as a commentary type thing. I didn't record this or stream it, obviously. So yeah, we've downloaded the replay and recorded it. And here it is. This is a 20 and 1 Shaco gameplay against one of the most stacked teams I've versed. Probably not the most stacked team I've versed, but definitely one of the most stacked teams I've versed. So their mid laner is Fantix. All of their players are pretty much Challenger, apart from their ADC, but everyone else's. Their top laner is Swiper, who's been a pro player for God knows how long. Their jungler is one of the best in OCE. Their mid laner is Fantix, who uh, went over to Korea recently and beat Apto and shit in lane and stuff. And their support is a, a really good mid laner, I think. Um, yeah, explain support, but Gaff. So yeah, we're up against it, mate. On our team, I'm not really sure I know anyone or if anyone's a pro player or whatever. So, our Lulu definitely isn't. But um, no real flame there, just uh, saying it how it is. Zombie nearly uh, hits, us, hits us with a hook. So they come in here, mate. This is when you know they're just keen as for the W when they do something like that. But yeah, this was uh, this was probably the most fun I've had on Shaco guys for ages, eh? Like, you can see me there when they come in and invade. I'm having a bit of a laugh with them. You know, I think I put in chat, you know, gave them a question mark as well, which really just threw them off early game. But no, like, I, can't, I cannot remember having this fun playing Shaco. Uh, especially the way I kind of played in this game. It was, like, mechanically very, very nice. And there was... Uh, there were little mistakes mate, made in the game, and this was the biggest 1v5. I don't want to say 1v9 because my team didn't really in or whatever, but the biggest 1v5 I think I've had, especially in this elo. Like, if we don't... Let me put it this way, mate. If this team didn't have me going what we go, then it's just over, man. They're going to lose that LP. But we had to put the, uh, the sweatpants on, mate, and go a bit hard, but... Yeah, uh, it's all about the early game, guys, and this game is pretty much why I run Electrocute. Because when you get a lead early, it's just so easy to snowball off of it. People will say, say the same for Dark Harvest, but Dark Harvest doesn't give you the same, what do you call it? Like, when you, uh, you run Electrocute, it almost secures kills early game. Especially when their laners are shoved and you have CC and, and whatever, and they're below a half HP. You guys will see in a minute when I go bot. But yeah, this is the reason why I just love Electrocute. It's just so easy to snowball off of it. Especially when you get like a lead early game and, a, and an early dust bite. It's nice and easy. But you guys, I don't really have much to talk about this game. I think the 48 minute one was long enough. You've probably heard my voice over and over again. Recently, so you don't really need to hear it anymore. So we come bot lane here. The reason I've, I, I came bot, you guys should have noticed anyway. At the start of the game, their lanes, the matchups and stuff. But Blitzcrank is probably going to play aggressive in the first three levels and try to kill Lulu or Ezreal. So we just uh, anticipate that Omni's going to play Hell Aggro and we were right for once. And we come bot and get a kill and assist, so nice. Yeah, if you guys are serious, I just want to say this at the, the uh, start of the video as well. If you guys are serious about getting good at Shaco, what I would do right at the start of this video, so I'd go back and pull it and I'd take note of the matchups, right, on the Drew, Drew Tim's notepad. Write down the matchups and write down what you're doing each part of the game. So strategize. Say early game, I'm going to do this. I'm going to gank this lane. I'm going to invade here. I'm going to start here. This is my pathing. All of that stuff is what you should be thinking about. So it's not me like... This game, it's not me waddling around the map like some sort of simpleton and picking up kills left, right, and center. At every point in the game, or at some point, like every minute or so, I'm thinking about what my next move is. So... When I base, for example, I'm thinking, what am I going to do in the next two to three minutes? What's my aim? What am I going to look for? Am I going to just hardcore farm for a, for an item? Am I going to try and camp a lane because they don't have flash and all that? That's what you guys should be thinking about. So if you're serious about getting a lot better at Shaco, not just better at Shaco, you should be taking note, like pausing the video at points and saying, all right, this is what I'd do here. Let's see if Eggs does it as well. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm the most... Oh, doesn't even need to be the most in that, but the the infallible Shaco player. Yeah, I do make mistakes on him. Because, well, even this game, like, it's not the most perfect game. We die, and I actually kind of ended when I died as well. I just kind of knew the game was over, so I just ran in for a bit of a bit of a laugh, mate, bit of bant with the other team, and died. 
But yeah, if you're serious about getting good at Shaco, analyze these games. I like to uh, make a distinction between passive spectating and active spectating. That sounds really fucking gimp, but I think it's true. So most people, when they watch, for example, Faker play, right, they'll just watch him. And for example, you know, that famous Z where he has the 1v1 against Rio, people will just watch it and they'll be like, fuck me, that was so sick. But few people will actually replay it over and over again and analyze what he did and how he was able to win that 1v1. Because most people, I reckon if you ask most people about that play, even if they watch it like five times, most of the people who would watch it can't tell you what Faker did to be Rio in that 1v1. But the serious players who want to get better at the game and improve and tell you exactly what Faker did and why he made that decision at that particular point in time. That's the difference. But when you guys are watching um, any Shaco player, it doesn't have to be me, any of the good Shaco players on YouTube, when you guys are watching them, or like a full, game, a full game, even of them on Twitch and stuff, I actually failed this wall jump here, which is terrible. Um, always think about... You know, how are they putting themselves in a position to win all the time? How are they making these sort of plays? How are they going like we go 20 and 1? How are they going 20 and 1? And there's a, there are a few reasons for that. So you guys need to try and figure out for yourselves. I'm not just going to, you know, fucking spoon feed you guys how to get fed on him. Um, and I kind of do in a way as well. Especially that last commentary I did. That was really, I think, one of the most informative videos I've done. And if you are, yeah, as I said, serious about getting better at Shaco, maybe not even Shaco, just jungling in general, but the, these videos are definitely a good resource, I think. Hopefully that didn't sound too arrogant, but yeah, the video's got a really good, uh, especially that 48 minute one. Great feedback, guys, so much appreciated. I'm not sure how many likes it has, it might have around 100 now, so thank you very much for that. Lots of good feedback, and um, on Reddit as well, YouTube, whatever, other wherever the feedback was found, much appreciated. Uh, I just want to actually say, I thought about opening up a debate, mate, about this, because it's kind of it's kind of frustrating me, and it shouldn't. Um, and it's the old OCE debate as a region in general. How does it fare as a region? Do you see that mechanic, by the way? Putting the old box down, mate, so the, uh, the next gamer, get back 71. The rise, by the way, if you didn't catch on what I meant. Uh, yeah, putting the box down, mate, so he didn't get hooked. Uh, but yeah, what was I going to say? Um... Yeah, so the Oce Oceanic region, mate, so treated as kind of like a joke from ep from any player from any other region. So, the Reddit post I made about the 48-minute game, I was like, <laughs> you know, blah de blah blah and whatever, and of course, you know, there's one guy in the comments section who's like, it's OCE. And, and that's it. That's the only... That's it. Yeah? Just, it, it's OCE. So I see this comment and I'm just like, oh, fucking hell, here we go. We've got some, you know, another ignorant kid online. And I don't want to come across as too toxic here, but if you make a statement like that, there is no truth. Well, there, it really just depends on, like, the game you're in, okay? And hopefully it will be a lot clearer after I say this, but in OCE, I will concede, and I said in the comment, you know, in my reply to the guy, I said, I will concede that there are a lot less great players in OC than there are in other regions. That's just how it is. You know, we're, we're less populated, and, yeah, in comparison to other in comparison to other regions, like, Challenger is less contested than NA, than Korea and stuff, because we don't have the amount of players they do. But that's not to say that everyone in OCE is shit. Like, I've been told that, you know, saying you're, you know, one of the best Shackos in the world, you're from OCE, you're playing against, you know less competition and all that, all that shit, and I'm just like, you know, fuck me, like... Challenger is the highest we can get, right, in OCE. You can't get higher than it. There's not some fucking division, yeah, higher than Challenger. So if you're Challenger in OCE, it still means something. You know, we can't get bloody, you know, there's nothing above it. So that's the threshold, mate, that we aim for. So if we get there, we're like, sweet. Now, yes, there are some bad players in Challenger and OCE, as there probably are in every region, but the difference is that the range of great players over here is a lot smaller. So I would say that there's about, hopefully this doesn't sound too salty as well when I'm this kind of discussion, but yeah, it kind of just annoys me a bit. But anyway, like our best players over here, I reckon there's about 10 players, right, who could threaten the top 10 anywhere in the world. So Korea, NA, easily NA, but definitely in Korea, I think our the 10 best players could easily get top 10. Now that's not to say they'll get rank 1, but I think they're definitely threaten the top 10, because a couple of them have done it already. Shernfire, our best jungler over here. I went 9-4 and four against him recently, by the way, in Eld. But, but yeah, Shernfire, who's our best jungler, plays for Direwolves, I think it is. 
went to uh, Korea recently, got top five, I think. Uh, Fantix, who was over there recently, went like nine and one against Apto in lane, and Drew Tims did a bloody review on that game. Of course, he did. So we have, you know, a crop of great players. It's just not that big. <laughs> um, and some of them are in this game as well. So Fantix is the GP, Swiper is the uh, the Orn top liner. So yeah, just to dismiss something because it's OCE is. It's very, very dismissive and I think ignorant. Like, yeah, and I think, uh, and it just kind of doesn't make my blood boil, but I'm just like, oh, mate, you just need a bit of a bit of help, to be honest. But anyway, let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Hopefully that would, I uh, articulated that in some sort of reasonable way and didn't sound too fucking neg, but I think you guys get my point. But seriously, like, I'd love to go to another region, mate. Hopefully Drew Timms is going to book me a fucking seat on the plane when he flies to NA for the Team Liquid Academy. Because I'll be there as well, mate. I'll be a coach. Don't you worry. But yeah, I'd love to go to another region, mate, and try it out. That'd be so fun. But uh, but yeah, I don't know what's happening in the game at the moment. It looks as if we're doing well. I end up picking up uh, two kills in the mid lane here. So we kill GP first, get him out of the way. We have save our Ignite for Jax, nice and easy. At some point during this commentary, guys, I won't need to speak, I don't think. I'll probably just chill and sit back. So this is more of like a laid-back kind of free-balling commentary, if you will. Another thing that I'm doing, guys, as well, is uh, in terms of leveling abilities, I'm always putting two points in Q at level 5. So whether that be at level 4 or level 5, depends. Depends on where I am and what I'm up to. But at level 5, I'll have 2 points in Q and 2 points in E. Now, you want to be maxing E first, of course. Someone uh, asked me in my Twitch chat last night, actually, you know. Pros are maxing Q, I think, on Shaq. Oh, no, it's just like, what the fuck? So, don't max Q. Max your E. But, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm always putting at level 5. I always have 2 points in Q and 2 points in E. Like, that extra half a second you have in stealth, I think, is... It's crucial to pulling off good ganks early game. Especially when you don't have mobility boots most of the time anyway. Having that extra stealth duration I think is key to pulling off a, uh, an effective gank. So I also wanted to point out that this game that their Orn was crushing Riven at this point. I think Riven just died as well. She's, she's like 032 or ends up being 032 soon enough. If she isn't already so... I think the trap most junglers fall into and it's, it's, uh, it's prevalent in the world, in high elo as well, is that they'll still try and gank for the lane that's getting pumped. Now, I think you guys have to realize that their team has a jungler as well. And because this is in Chow, their jungler Bibib isn't a retard, right? He's actually a very, very good jungler. So, he's behind me, right? Granted, he's behind at the moment. Their bot lane's kind of even, their mid lane's loose. Right? But his top is crushing. So the only lane he should really be ganking for at the moment, or the side of the map that he should really care about in preserving their lead, is uh, top lane. Right, and you see the gold as well? They're actually up in gold here at this point as we kill kill uh, Bibip and, uh, and his raptors. So he was actually just bot lane, probably just to farm raptors. But we end up going in there and being nice and aggressive. But yeah, if we fall into the trap of going top and ganking on... We run the risk of running into Jax, and in a 2v2, I don't know who wins that at the moment, because Riven is so far behind, and I don't know if I'm tanky enough or strong enough to kill both of them, especially Orn. So playing around top side of the map, you will rarely see me, mate, in that top. In fact, I don't even think I gank Orn at all this game. It's all about pressuring the JG and pressuring mid and bot side of the map, because those are the two lanes that I really care about. Top is just lost at the moment. Even if we kill Orn, what does that mean? He's still going to beat Riven in a 1v1 and do stuff, which is why I hate ganking... Uh, uh, tanks early game. So I think that's a, those are a couple of key lessons, mate. You always want to be aware of where, what the other junglers, for some reason, Fantix decides to shove this lane and dies to us. Another great perk of having Mobius, mate, is that when you're heading topside, you can just run back mid and you'll be there in about five seconds to pick up a kill like that. But yeah, tracking the other jungle guys, realizing what they're thinking. So uh, as I said, I'm thinking, you know, Jax is... Right, all he wants to do is play around all on top side and hope that we're there. Because if we are there, we have a chance of throwing the game. But if I'm playing around mid and bot, like, there's no chance we lose. Our bot is doing good. Our ADC has arms, surprisingly. And, uh, yeah. So, as you see here, Jax is top lane, which is what he should be doing. 
And Riven here is probably, like, you know, keen to go in. She sees me here, and, you know, I'm like, well, I think I'm 9-0 and 0 at this point. But I'm just like, no, just chill. We don't need to fucking risk going in. Let's keep our lead, and I'll end the game in about, you know, 10 minutes, hopefully. So, so yeah, we just ping her away there and clear our camps. I'm not sure if I'm working towards anything here, but my main aim now should probably be Rift Herald. So Drake's gone. Hopefully Bot can get that bot lane turret soon, but I see... I see Orn in the bot lane, mate. Look at him go. So Swiper's gone bot. He's going to kill Lulu and almost kill Ezreal, but we save the day. Uh, and we end up going bot lane here. So you see Orn chases very, very hard. So all you have to do is run down. Nothing really too special about that now. It's important here to record, so if you see Blitzcrank, if you look at Ezreal now, you'll see Blitzcrank on the map right there. So, the blue buff prior to this one, Jax actually took, which I was quite surprised by. I was like, oh, okay, he's taking that when he's like a level 2 levels down here. So when I see Blitz here, I'm a bit surprised, especially when they want to fight this as well. So yeah, Jax is there, thankfully he goes for the wrong one. And we end up killing Blitz and, uh, and the Jax. So just being aware there, guys, like, yeah, okay, they know the uh, respawn time if you blue buff and Blitzcrank's up here, right, okay, well, that's that's a bit weird, that's made me a bit suspicious, you know, why the fuck would he be pushed up that far when I'm level 12 and he's only level 7? There must be, something's going on here, mate. So always be aware of, uh, of where their champs are, especially when they're in fog. Like, they're in fog, oh, well, they might be here, then we've got to be a bit careful here. So, yeah. Um, so what are we doing here? We're probably going to get Raptors and then go to Rift Herald and look to um, crush the map with that somewhere. Also, just want to ask as well, guys, leave a, leave a comment. Do you guys like these sort of commentaries like me? Kind of just, I'm legit just sitting here, mate, without a, without a notepad, funnily enough. And kind of just speaking. Just freeballing it. So let me know if you guys like these sort of commentaries or if you want me to kind of devise a strategy on how I'm gonna, you know, commentate over the game and stick to it. Kind of like I did in the last one, but I just... I'm really... I'm legit just fatigued, mate, at the moment. Not necessarily a league, but just, um... making videos, playing league as well, I guess. But yeah, I haven't worked out for about two weeks, mate, which probably tells in the, in the stream. I look like a fucking pin. But once again here, this Riven's pinging top, like, yeah, I know fucking Orn's in the top lane, yeah, I know we might be able to kill him, but Jax is nearby, and there's no point. So here I'm thinking, right, Jax is cut off in this top side of the map, we have so much more mobility than him with Mobies and Ghostblade. And I also knew that Fancius was going to clear his uh, Raptors here, because he's gone there, and he, being a good mid laner, he's just going to farm whatever he can. But yeah, now, important to recognise here as well, awareness, we saw Orn in River just then, past the Rift Herald. Uh, the Scuttle Crab, so we know he's coming down, the bot lane is Mia as well, so I'm like to ride, get the fuck out, we don't need to be here. But you guys might think that, you know, off that we really gain nothing, you know, we almost got caught, but... Top lane Riven actually now has a CS lead, and that was probably because of what I just did and Raj just did, putting pressure on Fantix and the bot side of the map. So Riven's actually, well, arguably, like, still in there with Orn, obviously she's not as strong, but that helped her out a lot. And we take a free Ocean Drake as well. So at this point in the game, guys, when all their outer turrets are down, you've got nothing to really do. You're, you've got a few things, mate. You want to look for their carries. Alright? You want to farm for items if you're close to them. And you want to secure your buffs and pressure theirs if you're ahead, that is. Or if your team's ahead or whatever. So those are three things that I'll give you guys to kind of jot down, like when you're in this type of position when all their turrets are, their, you know, out of tier turrets are down, you want to start thinking about those things and starting to dominate the game. Though so even here I could have actually held off and probably killed Fantix mid when he tried to shove this lane, because he probably knew Ryze had backs, so if I uh, queued through lane to try and kill him, I reckon it would have worked, but I actually needed like 50 gold for a BF, so I was looking for it, there's no jungle camps, just take a few minions mid back and get a BF. And uh, after this, after we come back out of base, we'll be looking to do red buff and then try and make a pick somewhere. Try and try and make something happen, mate. And once again, guys, like this is just me, or goes back to me. 
saying playing around topside is the only way we lose this game. And as you just saw there, four members top lane because Swiper's probably smart enough to, to uh, bait us into like a bad fight or some shit top and you know their whole team's there waiting for it. So as I said, playing around your losing lane is not what you want to do mate. It's the last thing you want to do. Now Fentius comes mid here for some reason, I don't know why, we just queue over and it's a pretty elementary kill we get on him. So he has Ninja Tarbies as well at this point, I think. He did have anyway. And we uh, killed him in about a second and a half, so... And he did, yeah, he did have Tarbies. So we see that there's three top there, I moved the camera to show that, and Varus is tied bot lane because of Ezreal, so we just riff mid. I did actually make a little mistake here, I didn't realise in-game, or even after it, when I recorded it and watched it. I should have actually kept pushing mid. Because their, their top lane is going to take them 8 seconds to recall. So right here, I'd be on the turret about now. And I would easily get their mid turret. But I just thought, you know, we'll just play it safe. Go back, take their raptors and red if it's up. It's not up, but we take their raptors. But I definitely should have uh, been able to get that mid turret for sure. But anyway, not bad. It's still worth, of course. A worthy use of the old Rift Herald. And we're going to back here now. Now when you've got a lead like this, guys. So 12-0. You got 20 with 155 and we're level 14, mate. Don't build defensively. You want to kill the game off, mate, as quick as you can. So build an IE, get some more damage in there. Even getting like a LDR at this point would have been good. Because you see how that Varus has Tarbies, Gangplank has Tarbies as well. So even me getting an LDR here would not have been bad. And even if you rewind when I bought that BF sword, if I got a Last Whisper there, that actually also would have been really, really good for me. So looking back, that's actually kind of a little mistake, but thankfully we're so far ahead we don't really need any armor pen. We just do way too much damage, and Tarbis isn't going to negate any of that at the moment. So here Baron's up, our bot lane is for some reason, yeah, in the bot lane. Um, so here I'm just looking for a pick, mate. We've, we've taken our bus, we've got nothing to farm. I see Varus top, and I see Jax here as I queue over, so we're just going to go on him. If we kill him, then we can definitely do Baron, especially how strong I am, so I'll let this fight play out. So Varus used his R before, and I don't know why I R'd here when I went on him. I thought he was going to use his R on me, but see how quickly we kill him when he has Tarbies? Like, yeah, we don't need to go GA or anything defensive, lightly defensive. Just build fucking damage, mate, and be sweet. So we get a double kill here. Ping the fuck out of Baron. Let's go. And get this for free. So yeah, there were very few mistakes in this game. Uh, getting the mid turret there was probably one, and there were a couple of little, you know, micro mistakes here and there, but you're going to get them in every game, and we see the Ezreal mate, look at him go. Killing the Blitz and Fantix, not bad. And we're going to back here, get an IE and a stopwatch. So the position we're in, guys, like, oh mate. These are what you asked for, but dude, on Shaco. Like, these positions right here. Hard carrying the game, solo carrying the game, and... It's just the best feeling, mate. Like, this kind of reminded me why I play League. And why League sometimes... I'd say most of the time, but sometimes is really, really fun. And, you know, playing a champ like Shaco and doing this on Shaco. I don't know if you could do this on any other champion. Let me just throw that out there. And that's why, uh, that's why we play them, right? For games like these that come up every now and then. So Riven's fighting bot here. They kind of get sucked into it, mate. And thankfully we're all here. Rise, ults down. And yeah, that's... I think we end up killing two of them. So it quickly turns into a, a 4v3, which was originally a 2v1 for them. But they just couldn't kill Riven quick enough. And we got there in time. So we get this turret. We're going to get the next one as well. And probably an inhib. And yeah, that's the game over, mate. And you're going to see me in, I think, very, very soon as well. I was just having a bit of fun, mate. But yeah, it was nice to have a game, dude, where, like, I wasn't, um... I don't know, I guess trying too hard to win. Like, obviously, I want to win in this game, but I'm actually having fun while while doing it. I'm not necessarily autopiloting, but this is just a game where it just... I, I just felt the flow of the Matrix, mate, this game. And it was really, really good to play in. Especially against uh, these guys as well. Doing it against the best, mate. That's when you uh, that's when you got to pull out the performance of a lifetime. Yeah, as you guys are gonna see me in here, so um, please follow us on Twitch or whatever, Twitter, whatever you guys want. We have our own Discord as well, so come check us out in there. Send me a send me a gameplay if you want one reviewed. Come talk to me. Come say hello. What's doing? And the like, 
Uh, but yeah, please give this video a like, guys. Let me know what you think. What commentaries you want, what type of commentaries or whatever. That always helps. And yeah, what do you guys think of the OCE scene? Um, it's always interesting to hear that stuff, seeing as I do play in it. Yeah, we ping Riven here to do the uh, do the drake, get a free drake, and what have I got now? That was actually kind of bad for me, what I did, because I needed like 200 gold for a GA, so back in for a GA, GA would have been really, really nice there, but instead I have to farm red and then golems for it. Because I don't really have much more to say, uh, you will see a couple of more nice kills, we end up getting five more kills, so yeah, not bad. Um, let me know what you thought of the gameplay in the comments, in the, I was about to say commentary, in the comments. And yeah, if you guys are serious at Shaco, or, you know, are serious about getting good at him, then yeah, pause the video at different parts of the game, guys, like every time we back, maybe, or every, like, minute or two, and say, you know what, this is what I would do here, let's see if Eggs does it, or, um, if you think you have a suggestion for me, what I should have done at that point in the game, then put it in the comments, say, why didn't you do this at that point, surely that was a better decision, anything like that, guys. But yeah, what did you, uh, if you guys enjoyed the gameplay, let us know if you did. Uh, the commentary as well. What, what do you guys want me to uh, commentate about? If you uh, if you want a commentary at all, that is. If you guys just want the raw gameplay, then let me know. But yeah, not bad. Alright guys, so uh, enjoy the, the last couple of minutes. And yeah, let me know what you thought of the commentary. And the vid in the, uh, in the old comments. And please give this video a like and subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already. And check us out on Twitch. Check out the head on Twitch. Alright boys, uh, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next one. Alright guys, peace.